Hey guys, it's post sports writer Ryan Bassesi here, sitting in for Ronnie Gallagher again. It's the first night of the season. We're here at Salisbury and Carson with the Rome in the County pregame show, sponsored by Sundrop. Uh, we're going to talk to Salisbury coach Ryan Crowder, Carson coach Joe Pinion. Uh, I had to make sure I got that right. Pinion, of course, coached at Salisbury for 10 years, and now he's on the opposite sideline for once. And uh, Crowder is in his first game as a head coach at Salisbury after serving as defensive coordinator for several years. So let's go talk to the coaches. All right, and we're here with Carson coach Joe Pinion. Uh, Joe, tell us, how does the view from the opposite sideline look? Uh, not as friendly. <laughs> no, it's, it's always fun to play in Ludwig Stadium. Um, yeah, a lot of good friends on the other side coaching, a lot of good kids over there had good relationships with. But, you know, when they kick it off, it's going to be, I guess, mano a mano. Let's go go right, let's strike it up a little bit and see what happens. You know, we're excited about the chance to be here. I know it's a quality football team over there. We just hope we put a good product on the field too. Now, interesting dynamic with this game since Crowder uh, was your defensive coordinator for a long time. You know some of his tendencies, but I'm sure he knows some of your tendencies too. He knows all our tendencies. He knows all our signals. I mean, I know all of his. But you know, the bottom line is, it's we were in the JV game last night. You could tell it was like kind of a chess match to see who was going to call play first to see who could learn, read the signals quick enough. But I think everybody will have their own little strategies to get around that stuff. And hopefully, I just hope both teams go out there and play well. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's it's certainly been built up to be a big, big ball game. So we're looking forward to it. What's the buzz and the excitement like coming into the first week of the season, approaching the first game? You're an hour away now. I mean, I guess there's nothing like it. Well, it's kind of different when you're driving up the road that you've driven up so many times and you're wearing the wrong colors. But um, the buzz has been our kids are excited about this opportunity, that our community is excited, our, our faculty and administration. Uh, they really accepted what we do and, and I guess accepting me and that's created a lot of positive atmosphere. I think our kid, I'm ready to see our kids play and I'd love to see our kids win because you know that's that would be just perfect for what the amount of work they put in. So uh, it's it's been different. It's it's kind of strange and but it's it's going to be fun. Now Mike Juan Stout uh, this week committed to Appalachian State. Now you're a big app guy. Did you have anything to do with that? Stay completely out of it. Uh, you know, I think it's a good fit for him. I'll be honest. I really think it's a great fit for him for because he fits a position that they really need. Uh, he's got he had some other opportunities, but he just felt at home there. And and I told him I was going to stay out of it because I don't think that's my decision to make. I think it's his. And and I did kind of lay low in that whole deal. And I, I wish you could see him tonight, but he's got a little bit of an injury, and we're not going to play him tonight. But he's a great football player. How does that change what you do defensively with him out of the picture? A bunch when you you got one of the county's best football players sitting on the bench it changes everything but you know it's one of those deals that he's got a career that we're more concerned about than we are a football game so we're going we're going to protect him a little bit get him healthy and go from there the always quotable joe pinion and we're here with the salisbury coach ryan crowder coach crowder um what are your feelings coming into this your first game as a head coach and against your mentor joe pinion well, I mean, really, it's just another game. It's a new beginning for us. It's a new beginning for our school with, you know, just new coaches, some new faces, and, you know, just keep the winning tradition going. What are some things the fans should look for coming into tonight's game that are that are here tonight? A lot of new faces. You're going to see a lot of guys that you probably haven't heard of before, uh, you know, playing on both sides of the ball. We have a lot of underclassmen, a lot of sophomores that, you know, you're, they're going to be carrying the ball around tonight for us. Are there a few kinks to work out, I guess, when you're replacing guys like uh, Ruffin and, and Balk um, and, and Keon Adams, I guess? Uh, yeah, there's a lot of kinks to work out. I mean, just the timing and, you know, you never know how the kids are going to react in a big game. And if they've never, you know, taken snaps in a game that meant something, then you don't know how they're going to react in that situation. That's what we're going to find out tonight. It just rained and it's kind of humid. And uh, usually there's cramp issues uh, for teams in these first couple games. I mean, have you thought about that at all? or? Yeah, we fed them a lot of fruit today during the day, some bananas and stuff during our team meal. Uh, well, not bananas, but we fed them some fruit during our team meal. And, you know, we talked to them last night and early this morning about it as well because we had some of those problems with the JVs last night whenever it got all hot and humid. Did you and Joe talk today or talk yesterday? Uh, we talked on the 50-yard line before the game, and, of course, I met him and let him in. And 
went through showing him where he's got to be, but he knows all that. He's not used to that sideline, though. No, he's not used to that sideline. He's not used to dressing up in the top of the gym, but, you know, it's kind of different, especially him coming over. It's kind of unique for me, I guess. Did you know that uh, defensive end Mike Juan Stout was going to be out of this game for Carson? Uh, not till you just told me. <laughs> Is that, how do you feel about that? I, it doesn't matter who they have. We have to execute. I mean, they can have Ray Lewis back out of retirement over there, and we still have to block him. <laughs> so whoever they put over there, we just have to execute and get to our assignments and block our guys. All right, guys. I can tell you Carson by two. Carson by four, Carson by seven, Carson by seven, Carson by 10, Carson by 14. That's all that other stuff I read in the papers and all that stuff today. But that's the cliche stuff. Okay, you know, you're expected to lose. All right, I'm not going to try to pump you up on that. What you guys got to understand is this is a new beginning. This is a, this game means something. All right, this game means something. Not because of who we're playing. Not because of who their coach is or it's a county game or any of that stuff. This game means something because this is going to be your identity. This game here is going to set up as to who you are. All summer long, all I heard from everybody is who's your coaches? Who's calling the offense? Who's calling your defense? Who's coaching with you? Guys, everybody that's coaching with us has been a coach or played at Salisbury within the last 10 years. Every single one of them. You all may not know, Coach Oxford was here back in 2000, but yet they don't know who we are. They want to know who our defense is. Even though we've got eight guys that started meaningful games last year, multiple games last year, but because Keon Adams is gone, they want to know who you are. They don't know you, Clint Commodore. They don't know that you're an all-conference and all-county player. They don't know that Jordan Oglesby separated that kid's shoulder against Lexington to break up that pass when the game was on the line. But they don't know you. They don't know that Cameron McClendon, all that meaningful starts you gave us once the playoffs started. Four games in a row. But they don't know you. They don't know that J.C. Burton was our middle linebacker all last year when the Bobby Johnson started multiple games last year. They don't know you guys. And they don't know who you are on offense either. All they want to say is, who's carrying the ball? That's all I've heard. Who's carrying the ball? You all can't score. Your coach is gone. You can't win. You can't move the ball. You don't have Brian Bout. You don't have Justin Ruffin. You don't have Max Allen. Who's going to carry the ball for you? They don't know that Michael Dyson is a man child. They don't know that Michael Dyson is going to fold up every single person that he comes across tonight. And my challenge to you guys, my challenge to each and every one of you, is that by next week, there's going to be all kinds of people here, but there's going to be people at other games. There's going to be people at the East Rowan game, West Rowan, all these other games, there's going to be people everywhere else. And my challenge to each and every one of you is that next week, when number 21 goes running down the field and somebody over at East Rowan says, who's at number 21? That everybody who's at this game and everybody picked up the paper says, that's Willie freaking Clark. That's who that is. That's Willie Clark getting eight yards of carry. Let's go, Adam, man. Let's go, baby. That's Creshawn Alexander folding those guys up on ISO. That's that, that's that running back that's firing through that hole. That's Michael Dyson and Robbie Slate every time on that middle linebacker, running him all the way back to the safety. That's who you are. And that whenever this whole thing is said and done, who we are, we're that team that beat them by 40 points tonight. We're that team that just went out there oh. and went for the All right, we've got some other great action going on tonight. Uh, North Rowan's at East Rowan. That's an inter-county game. 
uh, West Rowan's at Mooresville. Uh, two years ago, West Rowan had its, uh, I think, I want to say 46 game win streak broken at Mooresville. So they'll go down there and want to get revenge for that, I'm sure. And uh, South Rowan is at uh, defending state champion South Iredale. Uh, and of course, A.L. Brown Concord is one of the bigger rivalries in the state. And Davie County is hosting Greensboro Page. So uh, we hope to see you at a game, if not tonight, maybe sometime later on down the line. And uh, go to a game tonight, enjoy it, have fun.